if you followed IBM Quantum for the last uh, last five years, you will know that IBM's ability to hit its quantum roadmap, even though it's research, uh, they're hitting at least 90% of their promises that they made uh, back in um, 19, um, sorry, uh, uh, 2019. And, and I can't say that for all the quantum uh, players out there. So what they did here is they rolled out a roadmap that goes uh, beyond 2026, but I think it's important to focus on this 2023 to, to 2025. So essentially what they're doing is they're adding uh, what I consider semiconductor capabilities, which is, first of all, you've got die stacking with TSVs coming through uh, to be able to stack uh, quantum compute units uh, on, on top of each other. And then it's all about the connectivity, fusing together uh, chips. And Daniel, where, where have we seen this? And if you can see my mouse here, here's three of these quantum compute units fused together and then a high speed backbone to make that happen. And in 2024, these connections are more classical, but in 2025, uh, they are more quantum like and entangled. And that's a, a big deal because essentially you have raw quantum communications between these different, these different modules. And if it weren't enough of a flex, Daniel, um, you can connect multiple of these Kookaburro systems together to get up to, and it's funny, this was not in the, this was not necessarily in the pre-brief. I think they left this for, for the event, which was pretty cool. 20, almost 21,000 uh, qubits. Now, uh, to be fair, not all qubits are the same. And I think what, what IBM will be challenged on is the, the fidelity of, of their qubits or the usable qubits. Uh, some other companies call them algorithmic qubits. And I, I think IBM is getting ahead of this by them showing this Falcon R10 uh, test device with a, a radically uh, uh, improved uh, fidelity, uh, uh, fidelity rate. Because there's no question on, on the technique that IBM uses uh, around uh, speed, right? Superconductors are, are fast, but the only, the, the, the big thing that, 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 uh, their technique gets, gets hit on is the, is the quality uh, of, of, of those qubits. And if IBM can hit that fidelity and hit, you know, Kookaburra at 20, around 21,000 qubits, you know, it could be the size of a data center floor, but I think there's going to be different instantiations of this, Daniel. If they can hit this, I think uh, they have the potential to really hold on a leadership uh, position uh, uh, on this, which, my gosh, kind of kind of blows me away that uh, that that we've come uh, so far, and we're going to see some announcements over the next ten weeks. Sorry, the next uh, twelve weeks that from other companies out there with different software that can that can uh, actually utilize the, the IBM system. So super exciting stuff, a uh, big leadership opportunity for, for IBM. Yeah, Pat, you covered a lot of it. And, you know, at a technical level, this stuff is extraordinarily complex and it takes, um, I don't know, we need that island that Arvin talked about with a billion uh, physicists, chemical engineers, yeah. uh, quantum uh, you know, quantum physicists, scientists, but in all serious, right? One of the things I really appreciated from both Dario and from um, Arvind is the sort of really honest approach that they're taking, that they're research heavy. They're building a very significant ecosystem with, with partners in government, in higher education, in large enterprise. They're testing to try to create this high fidelity qubit that can add value they understand the interdependence that's going to exist between classical computing and quantum computing to really bring benefit in a commercial uh, space. And they're also saying, you know, at this time, it is primarily theory. They're saying that, you know, they're building these things, but it is not, and let me be more clear, it is primarily not commercialized at this point. And Arvind yeah. said that very specifically when we talked to them. 
because there are a little bit of sort of a mix when you go across the spectrum of companies that you know the promise of the commercialized quantum machine um, has kind of hit different phases because there's things like you know Azure Quantum and there's Bracket front and you say oh they're in the cloud now Quantum's just a widely available thing but the truth is is that getting these high fidelity qubits that can you know that are sustained with low error uh, with low error uh, rates is going to be extraordinarily important to do the type of computing that's going to solve everything from you know um, engineering uh, anti money laundering um, applications in uh, drug uh, discovery and compound detection that's going to work co and coincide with the uh, classical computing space. I like the ecosystem focus that IBM has. They're building the right set of partners. Um, and like I said, I like the fact that they're trying to build something to commercialize over the next few years that's scalable. You showed the architecture, Pat. You know, I'm kind of, I kind of look at it and I'm thinking, you know, with all of what we're doing with uh, 3D, with chiplets, with stacking, with CXL, which we'll talk more about, they're trying to build a way to create higher fidelity and more compute power. And, you know, on a, on a foundation, Qiskit, and what they're, they're doing across the board, um, there's a lot to be impressed by. But like I said, Pat, it is you still do need an extraordinary technical understanding to kind of un to see where they're at right now, to know that this is evolutionary. It's going to take a few years. Um, but I do believe, Pat, probably in the next one to two years, we're going to start to see much more clarity in the commercialization from IBM Quantum um, and this whole space, uh, which has been nascent in a lot of ways in terms of actual in-market technologies. We've talked a little bit like with Continuum, with some of the um, you know, the uh, security applications on the SaaS and stuff like that, but it's still very early. But what I got from Dario is that the research, the R in IBM uh, that you like to talk about a lot, Pat, uh, is in full effect. The investment is significant. The roadmap is becoming more clear and that quantum should be realized, Pat, at least in my lifetime. 